welcome back. If you just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 live on Channels Television Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. Police in Abuja finally nabbed the suspected mastermind behind the failed bank robbery in the Impape suburb of Abuja, the nation's capital. Kwara State Government demolishes property belonging to family of former Senate President Okola Saraki in Loring explains early morning exercise as a way to avoid confrontation. Federal High Court grants Economic and Financial Crimes Commission another 14 days to detain former AGF Muhammad Adoke pending his arraignment. An angry residents of fire-ravaged town in New South Wales heckle Australia's Prime Minister Scott Morrison over the government's response to crisis. For more information on our top stories and others, please visit our websites, channelstv.com. YouTube.com slash channels web has videos of our shows. Our review of critical sectors in 2019 continues tonight with the judiciary. I've been joined on the news at 10 by Professor Yami Akinshaya George, who's a legal practitioner and a senior advocate of Nigeria, to look at some of the developments in the judiciary in the year gone by. He is in our Abuja studio. Uh, Professor Akishaya George, thank you for joining us on the News at 10 tonight. Thank you very much. Let's begin with your assessment. And Happy of... New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year to you too. Uh, let's begin with the assessment, your assessment that is, of the judiciary. How would you say that this arm of government fared generally? Um, there's no doubt that... Um, the judiciary has uh, performed excellently in the in, in year 2019. You know, it recovered, it showed significant resilience in its ability to recover from the shocks, you know, that were inflicted on it earlier in the year in the form of, um, you know, invasion of, residences of some judges, you know, the previous year, and then um, um, the manner in which the Chief Justice of Nigeria was, um, was removed from, from office. Notwithstanding these challenges, you know, the leadership of the judiciary responded swiftly, you know, took charge of the situation and um, was able to deliver creditably in the year 2019. I think the records are there clear, clearly. You know, if, if you wish, I could itemize some of the, you know, areas in which the judiciary acquitted itself. Um, for example, in dealing with the election petition cases, you know, within a period of about six months, the judiciary handled om almost a thousand election petition cases. You know, pre-election matters and election matters were, were discharged, you know, were, were disposed of by the judiciary, you know, and... Um, you will notice that in the last exercise, there were fewer, very few cases of um, complaints of um, uh, abuses, you know, by the tribunals and uh, members of the judiciary. So that's a major achievement, you know, towards the sustainability of democracy, you know, what ability about... to resolve matters swiftly and quickly. What about um, the... There's also the issue of um, progress, which is, yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry to jump in here. to the yeah. trial of high profile. Uh, yes. Professor George, I'm so sorry to jump in here, but the removal of the former CJN, uh, Justice Walter Nogan, was that one of the issues that shook up the judiciary in the year 2019? And would you say that it was indeed, they did indeed send a signal to the, to, to the judicial community and even the country as a whole, the law is no respecter of persons? Absolutely. It, it, it was a signal to the entire country and to, to the judiciary you know, that um, Nigerians want a strong, vibrant, and independent judiciary. And that if the judiciary does not live up to the required standards, you know, um, there will be interventions. Although such interventions also must be properly carried out so as not to be seen as constituting undue interference with independence of the judiciary. So, so, so there are two sides of the coin which must be understood when that matter is being analyzed. 
What about the issue so of going the back solar? to the... Um, oh, okay, yeah. go on, please. Yeah, the issues, other issues uh, of the contributions of the judiciary, or the achievements of the judiciary in 2019, you know, the, the, some orders that came from the court showed clearly that the courts have come alive. They are aware of their responsibilities in terms of um, um, sustainability of, of democracy. I refer, for example, to the, to the order with respect to the recovery of, of um, uh, pensions illegally paid to ex-political office holders, governors, uh, uh, former governors, and so on, you know, whereby the court ordered the Honorable the Attorney General of the Federation to proceed to recover billions of, of, of funds you know, illegally taken from the Treasury under the you know, guise of um, a payment of pension. You know, that is an, ad, an understanding of the, by the, that shows understanding by the judiciary of his role as, as, a stand, as the uh, uh, standards, uh, as, as a standard setting institution, you know, as an, as an institution of accountability without which judiciary, uh, without which um, uh, democracy cannot be sustained. A further achievement of the judiciary in the year 2019 is with respect to, um, um, you know, the, the, the application of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act. The judiciary has come to embrace the innovative provisions of that law. You know, for example, judges who have been elevated to the, to the Court of Appeal were given dispensation to conclude part hard matters. This would, not have, would never have happened in the past because, uh, you know, the, the, the necessary instrument for the judiciary to be able to uh, do that was not there. You know, a further contribution of the judiciary to advancing uh, democracy and development is with respect to the, 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 uh, the decision, you know, which has tinkered with the so-called presumption of innocence when it comes to uh, cases of corruption. You know, um, the judiciary has now established that when an individual is alleged to be living beyond its known means of income. It, it, it is his responsibility you know, to, to show how he came by those assets, rather than leaving that onerous burden on, on the prosecution. So in so many respects, the judiciary has demonstrated that it is, it is, um, it is you know, a, a, an important, it is not an appendage of any organ of government, but an independent institution, which if given the necessary resources, is capable of contributing to the sustainability of democracy and, you know, and uh, its social and economic development of the country. And I'm sure that these achievements that you have real doubt will help you know, strengthen, strengthen faith in the judiciary. Uh, Professor Yemi Akinshea, George, yes. thank you for joining us tonight on the News at 10. Happy New Year to you once again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Staying with legal matters, the Federal High Court has granted the request of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission to detain the former Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Mohamed Bello Adoke, for an additional 14 days. Justice Othman Musa granted an application by the Antigraft Agency to hold on to the former Justice Minister, preparatory to his arraignment. In granting the application, the judge stated that the extension of the remand of Mr. Adoke for the purpose of his arraignment in court is necessary. The Commission took custody of Adoke on December 19th, 2019, Upon his arrival from Dubai, the United Arab Emirates, and was given a remand order to keep him for 14 days pending the conclusion of investigation. The FCC is charging the former AGF for alleged abuse of office and money laundering in respect of the granting of the oil prospecting license 245 sold to Shell and ENI. All things being equal, the Akanu Ibiam International Airport in Ugu should be completed before Easter 2020. That's according to the Minister of Aviation, Mr. Hadi Sirika, who was accompanied by the Deputy Governor of Enugu State uh, during an inspection visit to see the level of work done at the airport terminals and runway. 
Mrs. Sirica listed installation of landing system, taxi and airfield lighting so some of the equipment to be delivered within the timeline for 24-hour operation at the airport. The Akanu Biam International Airport in Nugu, arguably the busiest aviation hub in the southeast region, is experiencing a major makeover. When reconstruction is completed, the airport just a few kilometers away from the city center is expected to handle massive daily landings and takeoffs. The federal and state governments are satisfied with the progress of work at the major gateway of Nigeria's eastern region. I am very satisfied by the level of work. According to the program of work approved and established uh, by us, we're beating the deadline. As to the question whether it would be or Easter is p feasible, indeed it is. Um, by our program of work, we would be delivering this runway, God willing, before Easter. And um, that is sacrosanct. On collaboration, usually, you know we won't fail. The state will do all we need to do to make this thing work because we know it's important and we know how the closure is affecting everybody in Iboland. For the Akanu Biam Airport to meet global standards, the three kilometer runway will be equipped with major installations for smooth flight operations and better security. This runway will come with uh, other uh, equipment and other systems that would make the runway efficient and effective. The instrument landing system is uh, part of it. Uh, the airfield lightings, um, the taxi lights, and so on and so forth. The contractor handling the project is hopeful that international terminal building will be completed within a year. This year we're also going to buy the electrical and mechanical equipment for the terminal building, including the AC, the boarding bridge, and the baggage system. If everything uh, Everything uh, went on smoothly, I think, one year, within one year. For the first time since 2010, the Akanu International Airport is witnessing zero flight activities during a festive period due to the ongoing reconstruction that began in November 2019. All things being equal, passengers and airlines can't wait to take off this Easter. When the news of 10 returns, angry residents of Firehead Australian town of Cobago confront Prime Minister Scott Morrison over government's response to crisis. And more coming from our London Bureau and around the world in five.